Alright, let's start from scratch and build this spice cabinet from the ground up. First step was to build the side rails for the shelving. Now notice that I have three dados and that's for three shelves. I've got a lot of spices. Let's put those shelves in now. Add a backer and you have your basic spice rack. Next, I need a base for the spice rack to sit in. This is simple enough because it's just an extension of the existing counter. Add some drawer slides between the rack and the base and this is starting to look like something. All that's left is the motor out of our old Lincoln. Add a switch to control it to go up and down. And to that, some linkage to tie it all together. Oh, and don't forget a couple of stops to restrict the range of motion. This design looked solid, so I went ahead and built it. And my first test went brilliantly. The function was smooth and quick. It operated exactly the way I thought it would. I was really excited, but I missed something. Once again, I find myself taking this thing apart again to add modifications to see if I can get it to function correctly. This has been going on and off for about a month now, and I'm starting to get to the end of my rope. But before we get to my mods, let's take a quick look back at the design. When I first came up with this, I wasn't thinking about the stone on top, so let's add that back in. You see, the motor is out of a Lincoln, and it's for a window regulator which is designed only to lift a piece of glass, a very light piece of glass. When I added the stone to the top of the rack, it was too much for the motor. It just couldn't lift at all. So I've had to add a whole bunch of springs. So we have two big springs here that go all the way up. They come down to here and attach these arms. Uh, I've got this spring here that I added. Uh, there's an, also an internal spring in here. Uh, there's a, another spring back here. And so that's one, two, three, four, five springs. Not only does this look awful, it functions awful. So it's time to tear it apart and do what I should have done from the beginning, which is put in a big beefy actuator. So off camera, I went ahead and removed the old switch and soldered in the new switch. And uh, it was a pretty easy job. Just two wires coming into the actuator here. And as you can see, now we are good to go. Up and down works. Now all I got to do is figure out the linkage. And uh, again, I'll do that off camera and uh, come back. All right. I... Uh, Got all this back together now, and uh, I was able to reuse some of the parts, and now it's functioning. It's a little slow. Honestly, part of me misses the bubble gum and zip ties, but this is a lot more elegant. So next step is to get the splice rack mounted and in here. So here it is all back together and functioning correctly. Looks great, sounds great. This video is sped up, obviously, but it's nice to have it all back together.
Pa prka.